Alright, so in this video we're going to cover additional exercises dealing with addition rules for probability and at the same time we are going to cover some dealing with odds versus probability. Alright, so first of all let's define what odds are and what's the difference between probability. Okay, so we know from you know that probability It's equal to the successes, basically, divided by the total number of possible outcomes. As opposed to odds, which is typically confused, Typically, we confuse probability versus odds, which is not the same. Let's define that. So, odds, uh, that's going to be the number of successes, the ratio of the successes to that of the failures. Okay. And, well, this this meme, well, it's not necessarily a meme, it's uh, it's an article I remember reading sometime uh, about a year ago, and in which I, I like the, the heading of this article, so a vegan activist who rescued 16 rabbits killed nearly a hundred in the process, right? Nice job from her, you know, because her successes were 16 and the number of failures were a hundred. But in this case, this is not probability, this is something else. Now, before we go over, I'm gonna go a little bit more a little bit more in depth about the concept of odds. Let's define odds for versus odds again. So odds for okay, I'm gonna repeat this myself. So it's gonna be the number of successes over the number of failures. The odds against that's going to give us the reciprocal of this, the number of failures divided by the number of successes. All right. Now another another case in which we see the odds and and I like this. Um, maybe you have seen this type of um, ads related to casinos, right? I don't know. Maybe you, when you go to Vegas or or something. This is very typical. So they say something like this. Our machines. are the loosest the odds of winning are 95 percent all right so and sounds like when you see when you read something like this, you, the first thing that comes to your mind, oh wow, we have ninety percent chances of winning, but uh, but that's not the same as probability, all right? Really, what this is saying, this is saying the following. So this is telling us this ninety five percent odds of winning. It's the same as saying 0 0.95 all right which is the same as 95 over 100 that means this is the number of successes divided by the number of failures okay well i mean when you look at these two numbers 
the the numbers do not look too far away from each other so so you may still think well it it's not that bad but how about if, how about this in terms of probability all right so for probability in this case let's see let's uh, let me use a different color here so when it comes to probability the probability will be the number of successes divided by the total number of outcomes All right which means in this case well the total number of outcomes includes both successes and failures all right because total number of outcomes well it's uh, it's it's going to be the addition of all the possible outcomes so when in when when playing at the casino okay so when playing at the casino either you you fail or you succeed so those are the two possible outcomes now putting the numbers that we have from above 95 percent okay 95 successes divided by 95 plus 100 which is really 95 divided by 195 okay and in this case well the number you're not gonna like the number let's have uh, let's use a calculator to simplify this this is only 0 0.487 basically 48 percent probability of winning so this is this is only used for advertising the casino right this is not this is just advertising but this is but when it when you when you sit down and analyze between odds and probabilities so of course everything goes around probability so ultimately this is what you will have the chance of winning only 48 percent no wonder why those casinos in Vegas are really fancy you know because the house always wins so and then you go you go with this 95 with this 95 percent which sound, which looks very appealing you go to the casino and then you lose everything no wonder you lose everything because that doesn't mean 95 percent probability is 95 percent of odds in this case All right so that means you will hit 95 successes per 100 failures and in terms of probability look how how low this is okay not even not even 50 percent chance barely 50 percent chance if you want to round up all right so let's let's move on to the next topic here let's see okay so i would like to give you a more uh, a more um, let's say um more visual way to understand the addition rules so these are the addition rules these are the addition rules typically we call them the or rules the end rule well the end rule if you will i'm going to skip the end rule is when we have two different events and have elements in common which is what we have below here however I would like to focus more on the top two so we are gonna look at the OR rules for this joint for this joint event alright so let's use let's get ready with notation so let's say this is event A and this is event B so we are going to consider two events that do not share any characteristics at all right when it comes to find the probability that a 
the union symbol from algebra means or that's what we use a or b all we do is add the individual probabilities probability of a plus probability of b in the case in which we have situations in which two events have elements in common for example okay event a let me let me use blue highlight that set okay and I will use pink to highlight event B. Notice these two sets intersect and that and the reason for that is because these two events have elements in common. So in, in this situation the probability for A or B will be Again, the sum of individual probabilities. But in this case, when we, when I add these two probabilities, when I add all the elements in A and all the elements in B, notice I'm counting twice in this region in purple. So I what I need to do is to subtract P, which is the intersection between the two sets and the reason for that is it's so we don't count them twice okay so right now in these pictures right here looks like a lot of symbols and images but it will make more sense as soon as we start making some examples so which is actually the next page okay so. So we are going to consider uh, the sample space of rolling a dice, of rolling two dice, one green dice and a red dice provided in each part. Find each of the probabilities. Okay, so we are going to look at, we are going to roll two dice and we are going to look at the probability of, of obtaining a green four. Okay, so we are going, I'm going to highlight all the possible light the possible outcomes that give me a green roll by the way by the way in this case um, all these numbers that you see it's uh, it's the addition of the number that we obtain when we roll two dice right like in this case the minimum sum that we can obtain is 2 and the largest sum is 12 so in this case, I'm going to highlight all the possible outcomes that give me um, green 4. Okay, first of all, I need to define my event. I'm going to call, I'm going to call this event A, which is green 4. The probability that the event A occurs is going to be how many do I have shaded in this case, the successes, how many, in other words, how many times did I succeed to get a green four? In this case, count them all. There, these are six out of the total possible outcomes in this case. So we have six times six, which is 36, which reduces to one sixth. Okay. What is the probability of obtaining um, red 2? Alright, so a red 2, I'm going to use a different color highlighting, I'm going to highlight all the possible red 2. So highlighting this gives me a red roll including a 2. And again, let's count them all. How many do we have? So first of all, let's define the event. Red two. P of A equals it's going to be the the successes the number of times I succeeded to obtain a red two which is 
six out of the total positive possible outcomes and again it's the same answer as before okay now let's start looking at more elaborated situation now the probability that the sum is less than four okay so let's define the event so a sum less than four notice it's less than four or not less than or equal four it does not include the four so in this case I'm going to use a highlighter here and I'm going to highlight not the sum equals four only the ones that are less or less than four only so in this case the probability that the event A occurs is going to be the number of successes which in this case is 3 divided by the total possible outcomes which is 36 and that's going to give us a 112 okay. let's move on to another example Alright, let's find the probability that the sum is greater than 12. Well, let, first of all, let's define it. Probability, nope. let's define the event A, which is sum greater than 12. Well, in this case, when we find the probability of the event A, it's going to be zero because the largest sum we can obtain is 12 we can never get anything larger than 12 all right for the next example we they're asking us to find the probability that the sum is less than 2 so let's define the event a to be the sum less than 2 so in just the same way with the previous example the lowest the lowest we can get about the sum of rolling to die is 2 so we can never get a sum less than 2 so also final answer is 0 okay all right for the next one we need to be very very careful all right so probability that the sum is not greater than 2 so it's not greater than 2 let's define the event okay let's define the event A which is in this case is the sum not greater than 2 okay now this is kinda tricky and weird to read okay so we are going to look at the opposite of some not greater than 2. The opposite of not greater than 2 is less than or equal to 2. Okay. Less than or less than or equal to 2 is the opposite of greater than only 2. Okay, so the probability for that, the probability of the event A will be Okay, let's find out how many do we have for two or less. In this case, it turns out we have only one possible outcome. So this is going to be one over 36. Okay, let's look at another case. The probability that the sum is not less than or equal okay to number eight okay so let's define the event okay so sum is not less than or equal eight but again this is kind of weird to read so in this case I'm going to find I'm going to write the complement of this sum less than or equal not not less than or equal 8 is the same as saying that the sum is greater 
than eighth. Okay. So all we do is I'm going to focus on this symbol right here. These are equivalent symbols, basically less than, I mean, not less than or equal is the same as greater than. Okay, so let's find the probability for that. Okay, it's going to be something over 36. Let's find out. So, some greater than 8, but in this case, those not does not include the number 8. So, it's only 9 or greater. In this case, all these possible outcomes. If we count them all, we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4 plus 3, 7, plus 3 is 10. So 10 out of 36, which reduces to 5 over 18. Now, let's see. Let's look at the next example. Now we're going to look at the odds. The odds for a sum greater than or equal to 4. Okay, so let's look at one at a time. All right. Okay, so event A, well in this case we want odds for sum greater than or equal 4 okay so this is what we are going to do okay so in this case I'm not going to um, to write P because this is not about probability this is about odds the odds are going to be odds four by the way I'm just going to write odds well let me add write let me write the four as well this is going to be the number of successes okay so in how many cases do we have some greater than or equal to four so some greater than or equal to four all this basically all of this right all of this so I'm gonna write the number of total successes which is in this case 33 over the failures which in this case the ones that I don't get a sum greater than or equal 4 which in this case is 3 okay this reduces to 11 over 1 when it comes to odds we typically we typically write them the following way the odds are 11 to 1. So this is not probability again. This is this is odds. Okay. So let's see. Let's look at another one. Okay, let's look at the odds against a sum of 8. Alright? So let's see. The event A is sum equals to 8 okay sum equals to 8 so odds against a will be in this case be careful because the odds against will be now the number of failures at the top divided by the number of successes but first of all we need to check in how many cases do we have uh, sum exactly equals to 8 okay it's this diagonal here of 8 which in this case is 5 so I have 5 successes in the, in the denominator and the difference from 36 which is 31 okay again writing this it's going to be 31 to 5 odds against in this case. Okay, let's look at another example. Ok, 
Okay, let's do, let's see what else do we have next. Okay, so the the odds against a green five. Okay, so first of all, let's define the event a green five. So now we're gonna look odds against event A, which is green 5. Okay, so we're going to look at the successes below and the failures above. Okay, so let's see what we get. Oops. So let's see in how many cases do we get a green 5. So for a green 5, we're going to get all this. Okay, so we, it's a total of six successes, which in this case, the number of failures is the the ones that I didn't highlight, which is a total of a total of 30, and that's going to give us 30 over six. That's going to be five over one. So the odds against are five to one. Notice this is bigger and this is smaller because look at how many chances I don't have. To hit a to hit a green five, it's only it's only six out of thirty or six out of thirty six rather. Okay. Now let's look at this addition rule. So in this case, we're going to introduce the word or, which in this case it's going to uh, it's going to bring up the concept of using the addition rules. So in this case, we are going to define to different events. The probability that the sum is greater than or equal five, equal 9 or green 1. Okay, so in this case I will define event A as the sum greater than or equal 9 and I will define a second event. The second event which is I'm going to call it B which is going to be green one. Okay, it's green one. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to highlight all possible outcomes for some greater than or equal nine, which in this case it's all of this right here and I'm going to use a different color to highlight all green one in this case green one let's highlight this okay now I think this visual right here will help you have a better understanding of the additional rules that I got from here in which I have event A Okay, then I had event B. Okay, so in this case, we have we have disjoint events because in this case there are no overlaps between these two. All right, so these are disjoint events. Another way to call this, uh, there is another fancy way. These are called mutually. exclusive event as opposed to the other case when there's when there's an intersection when they have elements in common these are called not mutually exclusive So in this case, we are going to have a, a set of mute of not mutually exclusive events. So I'm going to keep this page, so I can so you can see the rule we're going to use here. So in this case, I'm going to use the first rule: the probability that either a, which is some greater than or equal nine, or b, which is green one, it's going to be just the addition of these two. 
in this case I'm not going to subtract any overlaps because there's no any there's 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 no overlaps at all between these shades right here so the probability that A or B occurs is going to be P of A plus P of B now how are we going to define those values well first of all how many do I have for A so for A I have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's 10 out of 36 plus B, which in this case is 6 out of 36. Okay, which in this case this adds up to 16 out of 36, or if we reduce to lowest terms, we are going to get 4 nines. But that's probability, not odds. Okay, we're gonna let, we're gonna get to some of those with odds. Now let's see what's the probability that the sum is less than five or red greater than four. All right. Okay. Let's define the events first. Event A, which is sum less than five and event B which is red the red greater than greater than 4 so Let's determine whether these two events are going to be disjoint or mutually exclusive or not disjoint, not mutually exclusive. Now let's see, let's highlight with green all, all of those that are a sum less than 5. Notice we don't include the 5 because it doesn't say less than or equal 5, it on, it's only less than 5. On the other hand, red greater than 4, okay, how many red greater than 4? So this is the rows of 4 or 4. Well, in this case, I'm not going to highlight this one because it's only greater, not greater than or equal 4. So it's going to be only these two rows. Okay, so let's find, the, let's define this and find the probability. So the probability P of A or B equals probability of A plus probability of B, which in this case is how many outcomes out of the total for A. In this case, we have 6 out of 36. Probability, probability of B, well, we have 12 out of 36, which adds up to 18 out of 36 and reduces to one half or 50 percent if you want to represent it as a percent all right let's look at the next page see what we have so the probability that the sum is greater than or equal eight or, well, there's a little typo here uh, that I would like to correct. So let me, let me erase. Mm, yes, let me erase. This part, it should be only a five. Okay, sum greater than or equal five. Okay or green three. So let's define the event A, which is sum greater than or equal five. And event B, we define it as green 
3. Okay, so first of all, let me highlight all the possible outcomes for which the sum is greater than or equal 5. These ones, that one. Okay. And green 3. Green 3, I'm going to go to the green roll, which is vertical. And something interesting finally is going to happen here. All right. In this case, it turns out that we are going to have events that are not disjoint or that are not mutually exclusive. And that's because these two events right here have elements in common. All right. So let's see. I'm going to leave some space here for a little bit of a visual. I'll show you in a minute. So the probability of A or B, right? So in this case, it's going to be the probability of A plus the probability of the probability of B. All right, now, before moving on, let me draw a little picture here in which I will have two, the two events actually connected. Okay, so on the one hand, we're going to have this one in blue and this one in pink. Okay, see the intersection between these two is it became purple due to the combination between blue and and pink. All right, the, the thing is when I count all when I count all the blues, which in this case, well, let's count them all. I have a count of 30 out of 36 plus the pink ones, which is 6 out of 36. The problem is when I count all the blues, right? And then when I count all all the all the pinks these ones that are in purple I'm count I'm counting them twice so that's why I have to subtract all the overlaps when P of A and B that is pretty much this this right here I need to subtract them to avoid counting them all repeated so there's a total of one, two, three, four, five repetitions. And in this case, this is going to give us 31 out of 36. Final answer. So this is an example of, of not disjoint events or not mutually exclusive events. Let's look at the probability that the sum is less than five or green is greater than or equal to four let's find out what's what this going to be sounds too wordy but again define your event as usual define your event and shade and you will have a better picture so sum is less than five or b which in this case is green is greater than or equal 5. Okay, so let's find out what's going to happen here. So with blue all of the sums that are less than 5, that is 4 or less. On the other hand, green greater than or equal 5. So green roll 5 inclusive and 6. And now if you look, oh, it's equal to 4, not equal to 5. That's equal to 4. So this one is going to include this column as well. All right, so let's find the probability. The probability that either A or B occur. Okay, so in this case, it's going to be the addition of the two events 
probability of both probabilities. However, in this case, I'm not going to subtract the p of a and b because in this case there are no elements in common. So we are just going to add these two individual probabilities, which in this case is 6 out of 36 plus 18 out of 36, which adds up to 24 out of 36, which equals to 2 thirds when we simplify these fractions. Okay, let's look at another one. The probability that the sum is not less than 9 or green is not greater than 2. Okay, this is going to be a little bit tricky because we are going to redefine each of these individual events. Okay, so for event A we have the sum not less than 9 which is exactly the same as saying the sum is greater than or equal to 9. That's easier to read than this, rather. Alright, so for B, we're going to have green not greater than 2, which is the same as saying green less than or equal to 2. Okay, so let's look at both of these events individually. So, sum less than, I mean, sum greater than or equal 9, so all these outcomes that are going to give me these guys right here, and green less than or equal 2. So green 2 or less. Okay, so in this case, again, there are no overlaps between these two, so we are not going to subtract any overlaps. So the probability that A or B occurs, it's going to be the probability of event A, which is defined above, plus the probability of B, which is right here, as well defined. Okay, so in this case, how many out possible outcomes for some greater than or equal 9? In this case, there are 10 out of 36, plus, in this case, 12 out of 36, which adds up to 22 out of 36, which reduces to 11 over 18. Okay, let's do more examples. Okay, so here I think it's a good moment to quit this video and then on another video we're going to cover another other situations that still are going to deal with this rolling a die but under different situations, in this case conditional probability. Okay.